After reciting his third Philippic speech in the Senate on the morning of December 20, 44 BC, Marcus Tullius Cicero left the Senate meeting and headed straight for the Forum Romanum. From the rostra, Cicero delivered his fourth Philippic speech that same afternoon, calling the Roman populace to action. For marching to war against another governor, Cicero denounced Marcus Antonius as a public enemy and urged the people to unite with the Senate against Rome's adversary. On January 1st of the 43 BC year, as the new consuls, Hirtius and Pansa, took office, Cicero delivered his fifth Philippic speech. Inside the temple of Jupiter Capitolinus, Cicero once again urged the Senate to declare Marcus Antonius an enemy of the state. He called for the new consuls to command Rome's armies to move against Antonius, whom he called a robber. Cicero also proposed the Senate honor the current governor of Cisalpine Gaul, Decimus Junius Brutus, along with the Senate's newest propraetor, Gaius Octavius, and even the Pontifex Maximus, Marcus Aemilius Lepidus. Lepidus had successfully negotiated a peace treaty with Sextus Pompeius, the last living son of Pompeius Magnus, who had taken advantage of the turmoil following Caesar's death by attacking the province of Hispania under the governance of Gaius Asinius Pollio. By promising Sextus Pompeius a seat in Rome's Senate, Marcus Aemilius Lepidus had convinced Sextus to leave Hispania without further bloodshed. Because Cicero supported Sextus Pompeius, he praised the actions of Lepidus. His motives were clearly to augment the splintering of the Caesarian party and to weaken support for Marcus Antonius. But the ex-consul, Lucius Calpurnius Piso Caesoninus, who was the father of Caesar's widow, argued for peace. As Cicero vehemently called for the Senate to declare Antonius an enemy of the state, Piso argued the constitutional illegalities of the orator's wishes, pointing out that Antonius's crime of marching for the province legally granted to him did not merit the harsh consequences urged by Cicero. Piso, in a speech which rivaled that of Cicero, argued that as a Roman citizen, Marcus Antonius had the right to a fair trial before he could be found guilty of any crimes charged against him by Cicero's mere accusations. Under the advisement of Piso, a delegation was formed which would journey to Mutina and attempt to negotiate a peace settlement with Marcus Antonius. If Marcus Antonius would end his siege of Mutina and withdraw from Gaul, the Senate would grant him the proconsulship of Macedonia to which he had originally been assigned. Cicero, however, argued that such a delegation only delayed the inevitable war which the father of the Republic believed was the only way for the state to avoid enslavement to Marcus Antonius. But the Senate agreed to Piso's plan of diplomacy and declined to name Antonius an enemy of the state. Piso himself headed the delegation alongside the ex-consuls Lucius Martius Philippus, who was the stepfather of Gaius Octavius, and Servius Sulpicius Rufus, a long-time friend of Cicero's. On January 4, Cicero once again took to the rostra to address the Roman people. In his sixth Philippic speech, Cicero informed the populace that a delegation was on its way to Mutina, where Marcus Antonius besieged Decimus Junius Brutus. There, the delegation would offer Antonius the opportunity to end hostilities. But Cicero made it clear to the people that he did not believe peace would come from the deputation and appealed to them to be ready to fight for their freedom if the outcome meant war with Antonius was assured. As Cicero did his best to turn the Senate and the Roman people against Marcus Antonius, another Caesarian partisan, Publius Cornelius Dolabella, arrived in Asia. Having lost the three Illyricum legions that were promised to him through the Senate's reassigning them to Marcus Antonius, Dolabella had been forced to raise two new legions as he journeyed through Greece. Arriving in the province of Asia, Dolabella intended to resupply his legions for their continuing march onward to Syria, but instead he found all the cities locked and barred on the orders of the proconsul Gaius Trebonius. In response, he redirected his forces and laid siege to the town of Smyrna, where Gaius Trebonius was stationed. But Dolabella's inexperienced legions were unable to take Smyrna, and so Dolabella withdrew. As he retreated, reports came to him that the legions of Gaius Trebonius were shadowing them. 
So Dolabella laid an ambush and lured Trebonius's unsuspecting legions to their defeat before returning his army to the now undefended Smyrna. Dragged from his bed by Dolabella's men, Gaius Trebonius was subsequently put on trial for treason. After being brutally tortured on the orders of Dolabella, Gaius Trebonius became the first casualty among the liberators and was decapitated for his role in the assassination of Julius Caesar. In the middle of January, around the same time Gaius Trebonius was executed in Asia, Cicero launched into the seventh of his Philippics. Despite a meeting agenda in the Senate completely unrelated to events in Cisalpine Gaul, Cicero pontificated endlessly on the dangers of Marcus Antonius. Although he considered himself to be an advocate for peace, Cicero insisted that the actions of Marcus Antonius merited a wartime response from Rome's Senate and people. In this seventh speech, Cicero urged the Senate to break off peace talks with Antonius and recall the delegation to the city at once. By the occasion of Cicero's eighth Philippic speech, the delegation of ex-consuls have returned from Mutina, minus one member. Although we are not given the exact circumstances, the long-time friend of Cicero, 58-year-old Servius Sulpicius Rufus, died during the diplomatic mission. The returning ex-consuls, Piso Cisninus and Lucius Martius Philippus confirmed to the Senate that Marcus Antonius had refused its offer of the governorship of Macedonia. In his eighth Philippic speech, given to the Senate on February 3rd of 43 BC, Cicero drew his line in the sand. That Marcus Antonius refused the governorship of Macedonia, which had been assigned to him by the Senate, was a de facto declaration of war. In this speech, Cicero ridiculed any further attempts to negotiate peace with Marcus Antonius, stating that the only peace acceptable to Antonius was synonymous with an enslaved state. Again, pointing out the righteousness of the Marcia and Fourth Macedonica legions, who in remembering their obligations to the Republic had defected from Antonius to Gaius Octavius, Cicero set a deadline. Any legions who abandoned Marcus Antonius before the Ides of March of 43 BC, the one-year anniversary of the death of Julius Caesar, would be pardoned, but those legions who remained loyal to Antonius after the Ides would also be considered enemies of the state, deserving to suffer the same consequences that would befall Marcus Antonius at the war's end. The following day, on February 4th, Cicero delivered his ninth Philippic speech in which he eulogized and sang the praises of his deceased friend, Servius Sulpicius Rufus. As a youth, Rufus had studied rhetoric alongside Cicero under the instruction of Apollonius Molon on the island of Rhodes. Due to the machinations of Publius Clodius, Servius Sulpicius Rufus had lost the 63 BC consular election to Lucius Licinius Marina, the stepfather of Fulvia. During the civil war between Caesar and Pompeius Magnus, Rufus had sided with Pompeius, and as with Cicero, had been pardoned by Caesar following the defeat of Pompeius. Rufus then became one of the office holders of Caesar's newly created role for men who held the dignity of a former consul, which Caesar had devised to fill vacant posts usually reserved for ex-consuls. Thus, Servius Sulpicius Rufus had received the proconsulship of Accia. Cicero so admired the writings of Sulpicius Rufus that Cicero had not only saved Rufus's speech against Lucius Licinius Marina, but the orator had also preserved the words of Rufus written to him in a letter of condolence following the death of his beloved daughter Tullia, in which Rufus said, For if I had been home, I should not have failed to be at your side, and should have made my sorrow plain to you face to face. That kind of consolation involves much distress and pain because the relations and friends whose part it is to offer it are themselves overcome by an equal sorrow. At the prompting of Cicero, for having died while serving the Republic, Servius Sulpicius Rufus was granted a state funeral by the Senate, and later the Roman people erected a statue to honor him in front of the rostra. As Rome mourned the loss of one of its ex-consuls and faced the fear that Antonius's siege of Mutina would escalate into yet another civil war which would eventually be fought on Roman soil, Cicero came to the mid-February Senate meeting clutching yet another speech in his hand. In this tenth Philippic, Cicero praised Marcus Junius Brutus who had journeyed to Greece after leaving Italy. There, 
the Liberator had raised legions and marched on Macedonia. Gaius Antonius, the governor of Macedonia who found himself with no legions, thanks to his brother Marcus Antonius, was taken prisoner by Brutus. Cicero implored the Senate to put its trust in the Liberators by formally confirming Marcus Junius Brutus as the governor of Macedonia, Illyricum, and Greece, to which the Senate agreed. At the end of February, Cicero gave his eleventh Philippic speech to the Senate. Having learned of the execution and beheading of Gaius Trebonius, Cicero condemned the actions of Publius Cornelius Dolabella in the most vile terms. He again urged that the Senate trust in the liberators and formally confirmed Caius Cassius Longinus as the governor of Syria. The Senate, however, refused. With the Caesarians having full control in Hispania and Gaul, Placing the liberators in control of the east looked suspiciously similar to the land division leading up to the civil war between Caesar and Pompeius Magnus. The Senate began to wonder, had Cicero gone too far? 